This is how much money Meta makes for every hour that you spend on Instagram. And there are, of course, 2.4 billion people like you, all spending an average of 12 hours a month on the app. But what if it were 15 hours, or 20, or 50? It's very simple. Your addiction to Instagram equals profit. One, two, three, four. Like, comments. And it's not just Instagram. These are the seven largest companies in the world. Six of them are what we call big tech, and they're also in the business of making you addicted to their products. And the content notifications. And the first thing that you're taught as a tech entrepreneur, founder, is this framework, build, learn, measure. Build a feature, measure its impact on your customers, learn from the data, and use that to build again. But what happens when this loop is endless? What happens when you hire the most brilliant minds in the world to double down on that loop, or even better, making it self-learning? We're in the middle of a youth mental health crisis in America. Dark aside to the persuasive tricks used by the biggest platforms in Gaming the world. Gaming disorder as a mental health condition. At the very core of this problem is our newfound understanding and weaponizing of dopamine. Dopamine is a natural, very benign substance, but dopamine-driven product design has turned it against us. But what's the deal with dopamine? It's it's time for Explainer Time. Explainer Time. It's become a common misconception that dopamine equals pleasure. But that's not entirely right. Dopamine is useful for a bunch of things, including motion control, cognition, attention, and mood balancing. But very crucially, and the simplest way I can put it to you, is that dopamine equals reward. It's our brain's own reward for eating something delicious, or a reward for exercising, or for socializing. Our brain releases dopamine to encourage us to repeat that activity. It's our brain's way of noting when something important is happening that should be remembered and repeated. We identified dopamine as a neurotransmitter in the 1950s, and it was crucial to explain how we behave as humans. But we had leveraged the power of dopamine long before that. Dopamine is exactly what drugs do. Cocaine, heroin, nicotine, and opiates all work by increasing the levels of dopamine in our brain far more than the levels that normal activities would, like food or exercising or socializing. I sit here making this video because that's my job, but when we finally publish the documentary, I'm also gonna be glued to the likes and the comments and the live view metrics that YouTube gives me. I will excuse it and I will justify it as just studying the metrics but it is also a bit of a dopamine-driven addiction. YouTube will excuse it as tools for creators to understand their audiences, and they are, but our addiction to them is also in their own benefit because their literal business model is keeping you watching more videos. Meta is, of course, the master and the obvious example to pick on. They've been working for 20 years on perfecting this feedback loop of a like and the even stronger kick of a share or a comment. But so does Amazon. Like, how good does it feel to find this unique deal, which is probably not that unique at all, or to unbox a package that you just ordered a few hours earlier? These are the most obvious examples of this dopamine-driven design, creeping into our day-to-day -day interactions, but it doesn't end there. Our generation has grown hooked on dopamine, and this isn't something that previous generations have to struggle with. Your tech-based dopamine kick as a boomer probably came from finally getting that song that you call to request on the radio. Gen Xers probably got a kick out of finally recording that movie from the TV broadcast on their VCRs. Before I tell you about millennials, let me confess something. Nobody wanted to sponsor this video because it touches on some sensitive topics. So I figured I'd use this lot to tell you quickly about our latest project, The Startup Club. Because as a founder, I, and I guess kind of YouTuber now, there's no time to keep up with what's going on in startups which companies raise money, what the investment landscape looks like, which new funds are popping up, and, and the new kind of startups that are getting funded. So my team started recrunching these news, like summarizing them. First, as a benefit to our customers at Slightbean, and only recently we opened it to the public. So we send this Startup Club newsletter twice a week. It's curated by humans and completely free. You can just head to slightbean.com slash club to join. We promise no spam ever. And if you didn't know, Startup Club is also a YouTube channel. We're building in collab with some other companies. You should check that out. Back to dopamine and nostalgia. I grew up on that very sweet sound of beating a Mario World horse, throwing in some extra addiction from gambling on the bonus round. So us millennials grew up on so much DPD, that's dopamine per day, which I just made up myself. <laughs> First, as the internet became a new source of socializing, and then it all went to shit when we could carry the internet in the palm of our hands. This is one device, and we are calling it iPhone. Very nice. It's, it's got everything you need, 
all wrapped up in one. And at least we had some time without this digital induced dopamine. But Gen Z's and Alphas, they were practically born with a phone in their hands. The literal problem with too much dopamine, which we understand because of drug addiction, is that they make the brain less sensitive to natural dopamine over time. Drugs then become an escape, a route to a new dopamine high that we no longer get from old school activities like eating or exercising or socializing. I'm not here to tell you that it's big tech's fault. That's not the point of this video. This isn't a conspiracy channel. I'm here to ask the question, how much is this dopamine centric design making things worse? The world is tough for many reasons, but newer generations are having a much harder time dealing with the world. And what part is big tech playing on that? Put a pin on it. So I did South by Southwest for the first time many years ago. Met some really cool people. One of the talks I attended was by this guy, Yukai Chow. It wasn't a very popular, huge session. It was a rather small room, but it opened my eyes to the retention tactics that a lot of tech products are using. And I actually thought it was very cool to apply this to products. So his system identifies eight core drives for human behavior. My favorite one was epic meaning and calling. Epic meaning and calling is basically doing something because you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself. So you feel driven to change the world, improve other people's lives, so overcome an epic adventure. Like volunteering to write an article for Wikipedia. But that's not really present much in big tech. They capitalize much more on drives like social influence. So social influence and relatedness is basically everything you do based on what other people do, think, or say. So it deals with more what we call white hat motivation, like collaboration, appreciation, you feel great, but also more on the black hat motivation side, which is competition and peer pressure, which makes you feel like you're sucked into that experience. Combine this with algorithm-based news feeds, which show us more of what we like, more of what we share, and it becomes a very powerful loop. You can also throw in a little bit of ownership. The work that we put in building our profiles and getting connected to our friends and putting our photos in there, building a follower base, and finally combine that with avoidance, a drive that modifies our current behavior to avoid loss. So a lot of companies use loss and avoidance to implement things like FOMO, fear of missing out. You see your friends doing it and you feel like you have to do it, or there's a notification of something interesting, you have to participate. And then over time, it builds up another loss and avoidance, which is sunk costs. You feel like you've spent so much time invested into this community, into your status, into your reputation, and you just can't leave it because you know you lose all the things you've done in your past two, three years. We might not be on Facebook anymore, but how many of us have actually gone to shut down that profile? We just don't want the loss and definitely don't want to miss out. What and motivation are things that drive us, that make us feel powerful, in control, we feel good. It's more on the open, and so it's good for things like community management, loyalty programs, innovative working uh, programs and systems. And then you have Black Hat motivation, which is more on the stealthy side, where we feel urgent, we feel more set, sometimes addicted, and so we're pulled into the experience, but we often feel less control of what we're doing. So in the long run, it could leave a bad taste in our mouths. The framework to which these companies are improving their products is not the problem. That's just one of many. The problem comes with the core objective of the company. More time on the platform, more scrolling, and more spending. Microsoft's core business is productivity. Apple's core business is devices. And while they definitely don't want you to leave their ecosystem, more device use doesn't necessarily equal more revenue for them. But that's not the case for YouTube, AKA Alphabet, or Instagram, whose literal business is more time on the platform. Now, combine that with measuring that extends far beyond a click. It extends to who you are. It's activity that you do across other websites and the entire internet, and it's your friends' activities too. You're maximizing revenue, which maximizes shareholder value. That's what we're supposed to do. But does optimization stop? When does it stop? All companies want more revenue, that means they all want you to use more of their products. Questioning that premise requires us to question capitalism, and that is a video for another day, maybe for another channel. But let's put those companies on a scale. Let's say a bar diagram thingy. We could probably place Microsoft and Nvidia on this side of the spectrum. They might screw up the world in some other ways, but not by making us addicted to spreadsheets and definitely not on Xbox either. I think Apple comes next. They may be moving a little bit further down to the right with their Apple Vision Pro and wanting us to interact with people through that. But the fact with Apple is that their customer is, well, their customer. I think Amazon and YouTube go next and, and they're more or less together. There's some great content on YouTube and you could be learning. If you're addicted to watching videos that teach you something, you know, like this 
really cool channel called The Startup Club, then that's not necessarily bad. Shopping isn't inherently bad either. We need groceries. Amazon wants you to buy everything from them and well, to buy more. And well, yeah, social media does fall at the far end of the spectrum and the most critical part, you are their product and they will continue to endlessly optimize to sell more of your screen time. The government is not gonna save us from this one, not even the EU with their GDPR pop-ups and, and unifying USB-C, thanks EU, but there's nothing that they can do against free will. Like if, if someone wants to spend more of their free time on Instagram, stopping that would literally be a violation of their liberty. No, that that's not the solution. Just like good old drought rehab, Addiction to tech is a problem that we have to solve ourselves. It takes seeing ourselves in the mirror and making a conscious decision to replace tech dopamine with good old boomer Gen X dopamine. We need to understand the problem in order to tackle it. And well, that's kind of what we try to do in this channel, help you understand the problem. We also need to socialize more, <laughs> which we're not doing. We made a whole video about how millennials or Gen Zs are seriously lagging behind in that department. You should check it out and we'll see you guys next week.